A limited edition is a work of art such as a book which is only produced in very few numbers so that each watch will be valuable in the future. I really think Omega didn't get this concept because a limited edition of 7,000 pieces is not limited. <laughs> But welcome everyone, AB here from Watch Collecting Giant Productions and in today's episode I wanted to talk with you guys about two Omega watches that I've reviewed and personally I feel like these watches are kind of underappreciated because of Omega's let's say poor marketing in the past. However, these two watches are absolutely incredible, especially when I had them in hand I wasn't really sure what to expect when I got them in but I really absolutely love these watches and I feel like they're underappreciated. So today I'm going to shed a little bit of light on two Omega watches that I think are worthy of your attention. So let's start off with the watch that actually almost made it to my collection. That is the Speedmaster Moon Phase. This watch is absolutely incredible. One thing that kept people away from it was the 44mm size, but similar to many Seikos, they actually managed to make it quite wearable. It is a little bit thick, I'm going to showcase it to you guys. But the star of the show was actually that moon phase. One thing I really liked about that watch was the detail on a macro level on that moon phase, you guys will see as well. And also the entire watch was just executed extremely well. And in my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful Speedmasters out there that was overlooked due to poor marketing. Now what we have here is an incredible Speedmaster that was overshadowed because of the incredible amount of limited editions that Omega kept producing. Unfortunately, this watch wasn't that popular, but fortunately enough for those who are looking for this pre-owned, you could find this for almost 50% off. And in my opinion, it is an amazing deal, especially that this is one of my favorite Speedmasters and allow me to tell you guys why after I tell you the specifications. The watch comes in at 44.25 millimeters with a height of 49.8 lug to lug, which is the reason why even though this watch is big, it actually could wear under any wrist size. It's a big watch, but it does wear incredibly well on the wrist. Now the next thing you notice with this watch is that beautiful blue lacquer dial. It's very stunning in the metal and it actually gives off a very high quality color. And that was one of my favorite things about this watch alongside that beautiful moon phase. With a company that always uses the fact that the watch went on the moon multiple times, it's actually kind of charming to have the moon phase on this watch. Now the thing that made me fall in love with this watch was the amount of detail they put in that moon phase. When I had this watch in, it just so happens I had the JLC moon phase in my collection. Now when I compared both moon phases, the amount of detail Omega put onto their moon was absolutely incredible. As you guys can see here, they put so much detail and it's much appreciated. Even if you go on a very close macro, you can even see the footstep of the astronaut, which is incredibly cool in my opinion. Now, as I mentioned, the watch on the wrist was very comfortable. It is a 44.25 millimeter watch, so it is a little bigger, but with the 49.8 lug to lug, it fits very well. My only problem was with that 16.8 millimeter thickness, which was actually the reason I didn't buy this watch. Finally, the watch has a vertical clutch column wheel system, which basically allows you to leave the chronograph running without any wear and tear. Overall, this is a very underappreciated Speedmaster. So the next watch on my list is the Omega Seamaster 300 Ceramic. When I first got this watch in, I thought it was a little bit big, and it seems to be a reoccurring theme that Omega tends to make bigger watches, but they kind of wear a lot smaller. To me personally, I prefer watches 40mm, 39mm, however with this watch, there's actually something really cool about having that rubber strap and then having that 43mm case, all black watch with contrasting white, there's just something so cool about this watch. I personally wore it with like a t-shirt and a bomber jacket and it looked absolutely stunning. Now I'm not taking away from its technical aspects because this watch is incredibly impressive. Let me, let me just show it to you guys. Honestly, this is one of my favorite Seamasters that they've released so far. Now the first Seamaster was introduced in 1948 and since then it's gone through multiple design changes. It was clear that Omega didn't have a clear path for this watch 
and the Seamaster also came in different flavors. They had soccer timers, world timers, chronographs, they even had simple dress watches which is where the watch originated from. After that they came out with the Omega Seamaster which we know as the Bond wave dial. Since then they updated the watch to what we have now the 2019 ceramic and titanium. Now they do have normal versions, they're even smaller, but this watch in my opinion is one of the best Seamasters they've ever come out with to date. Now there's no getting around it, the watch is a very big watch at 43.5mm and 14.5mm thick. However, I do usually prefer dive watches to be around 40mm, but with this watch, there's just something so cool about this size. It feels like it could be worn over a SWAT suit or even a dive suit. It just feels like such a tool watch and honestly, the size isn't necessarily the biggest complaint I have. Should it be 40mm, I would probably prefer that. But with that being said, I even wore this watch on top of a bomber jacket and call me crazy, but it actually looked really good. Finally, the watch is fitted with the 8806 coaxial movement, which is a phenomenal movement. I'll have a video separate just talking about the coaxial. Overall, I feel like this is the most underappreciated Seamaster that Omega ever released. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a little bit of a shorter video, but I'm trying my best to bring new content to you guys every single day, especially in times like this. I'm hoping that I could produce as much content as I can to hopefully make your day a little bit easier. I know in times like this, you're probably quarantined or probably really bored. So hopefully these videos just makes your day just 1% better. And if you do enjoy these videos, if you appreciate it, please click like. It really does help the channel a lot. Also, it lets me know that you guys want to keep seeing more content like this. Make sure you comment down below a bunch of Omegas that you think are undervalued at the moment. I know their crazy amount of limited editions are really affecting them. But nonetheless, their watches are absolutely incredible. And they still deserve a spotlight despite their kind of weird marketing with all of the limited editions. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.